welcome it. I want to start on a positive note. Uh, it was symbolic for me to come to Romania yesterday and today. Uh, I would have hoped that I would be here a week after a positive decision would have been taken for Romania, I wouldn't say to be allowed in, but to get what it deserves. Eleven years too late, I would say, since this country has fulfilled all the criteria to do and to have exactly what every other citizen of the European Union does and has. And I have felt over this past day and a half that I've been here frustration, disappointment, but I want to turn that into one of hope and optimism based on the amazing solidarity that you have shown since the 24th of February. Nobody told Romania what to do. You went to the border and welcomed those thousands and thousands of Ukrainians fleeing a war that we would never have thought imaginable in 2022. A war where we realize that we have taken democracy, rule of law, territorial integrity, justice, equality for granted. A war where we have looked away from warnings even by you, that we were too reliant as Europe on an unreliable, blackmailing, threatening name. When I'm asked about what I look to 2023, I say, I want and I will fight for, and I have my colleagues here sitting in the first row, representing the European Parliament for your, for your country, Romania, <coughs> to join the Schengen area in 2023. I do not want a question of what if that does not happen. I will not entertain that. I think that if we really want to look at 2024, which is where we will have elections for the European Parliament, where you will be called as citizens in 2024 to choose who to vote for, to represent you in the European Parliament, that you know that we have done everything in our power to make sure that you join. No ifs, no buts. I think time has come. I think your solidarity that you've shown should now start to be shown with you. Realizing it took us 10 years to, to have a, a Women on Boards Directive. It took us years to talk about gender pay, 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 kick, pay gap. It's taken us years to talk about work-life balance. I want to make sure that any proposal that we vote on, once we vote on it, is one that takes every single generation into account. I wanted to make it easier for young people across the European Union to travel more freely. Young people across the European Union to have the same equality of access to everything, all services, all rights that are recognized across borders. I want young people to say, this helps me as well. Is it done properly so far? No. We are at the end of the European Year of Youth. Next year is European Year of Skills. I think it's up to us now to make sure that every proposal that comes takes, takes your certain skill set or lack of it into account for us to really be able to I like to say, burst out of what we talk about in Brussels and in Strasbourg, which is why I'm here today, which is why it matters that you speak to your politicians, it matters that you speak to your representatives, and ultimately hold them to account, because they're the ones who's going to come and ask you for their vote in 2024. Ask them, have you done that? We have one year to prove it, children. So my son will vote for the first time in 2024. I, I hope he votes for me, but I need to convince him. And I need to convince him by making sure that the decisions that I took put him at the center of the decisions that, I, that, 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 that we have been placed in, in, in front of us. So if it comes to cultural programs, if it comes to 
education, and on this I want to say, I, I, I know your Minister for Education, another example of a young woman who, work, who works in youth politics and is now um, running, uh, running the show, I would say, uh, from an educational perspective. Uh, I, I look at these role models that I think should have today the responsibility to pass the baton on to you, so that it's easier for you. I think we need much more women in politics in Romania. I would like to see more women in your parliament. I would like to see more women at leadership positions. I don't think you have enough. I think you need to do more. And I think one of the lessons that I have learned best is that a country goes through so much, so many hurdles, obstacles, challenges to enter the EU. Your country went through the same before joining in 2007. In order to prove that everything is okay, it, we, and I, I'm, I'm glad that I lived through that experience in my country and the transformational effect that EU membership has had. But if there was one promise that the political leaders in my country did at that time, gave at that time, is that we entered the EU to make sure that those values are taken for granted. Today we can't say that anymore. Today, each and every single one is put into question, not only outside the European Union, but also inside. So what is our response? Our response is to make sure that money, funds, are secret, are spent properly. That if we are going to, to adopt an unprecedented amount of financial packages, that means that when, for generations to come, they will still need to be paid back, to pay back. They would have been done for a good cause. They would not have been misspent. I would say for me, justice and dignity are integral to everything we do. Because that is exactly what Ukrainians are fighting for. If we look at what is happening few, I say say few kilometers from here, okay, thousands. But neighboring country for you, longest border. I think it's a, it's one that puts into question today everything that we have taken for granted. And justice and dignity are at the core of that. And we should fight for that every day, so that we don't have to live ever through war. You will not have to live through war in the decades to come. If you dash that promise, my fear is that those young people that you mentioned will leave those countries and will not go back. I have been told by the leaders of those countries that that is a reality. And I think that we need to not let them down. So, no, I, I now attend all these big summits and, and you know, big leaders and everywhere. You know, but I also ask myself at the end of those summits is, have we given the right signals? Or are we just here to take a picture? I think our response and our responsibility is to make sure that we come back with tangibles, and for so often we don't. We don't. That's what we owe to those friends. But you should tell them, don't give up. Don't give up. And I will finish with this. What is your advice? Never. So, oh my mother, never <laughs> give up on what you believe in. Never. The values and the principles that you hold should be ones that you carry with throughout your life. Whether you are become active in politics, whether you become active in another area for a cause that you believe in, whether it is simply about encouraging all your families and friends to vote, whether it is to stand up when you've been pushed down. I have lived through very difficult challenges where you are told, oh, just, you know, wait, or don't do this, or um, let someone else do it, or, you know, this is not something that women should do, in that. But my answer has been, if, and I was brought up with this in my house, 
my parents. If you believe in something, you go for it. And if somebody tries to discourage you, don't give up. Never give up on what you believe.